Well, hello there, friends. It's Wednesday. That means I've got some good news for you. It's March 23rd. Thanks for taking a few moments today, whether it's right around noon on Wednesday, later in the day, or just later in the week to spend some time. We need some good news. And I've got some good news. I've got some good news out of God's Word. And the first little bit of good news I have for you is actually really something personal. Now, some of you've noticed, some of you didn't. It's okay. I understand. But I got new glasses. And uh, it actually, it's been a few weeks, maybe a month or more. Now, some of you mentioned it. Some of you aren't quite so observant. I don't take offense to that. That's okay. You know, there was a time, one time when my wife got her hair cut that I didn't say anything and I didn't notice. So, you know, that happens. But yeah, I got new glasses. Now, that's the good news, the bad news. So I started, I let off Good News Wednesday with the good news. The bad news is I had to get a change in my prescription. And so I now have these fancy things called progressive lenses. And so, uh, yeah, so I don't know what that means. Somebody told me it means maybe I'm getting along in age. But anyway, that's okay. So I had to get progressive glasses because progressive lenses because, yeah, I was having trouble reading and seeing things close up. And then I have some other issues. Anyway, you didn't tune in to Good News Wednesday to hear about my vision issues. But it's good news for me because now I can see better. I can see clearer. I can see things that I couldn't see before. Or I was that things that were starting to look blurry. And so today I want to talk a little bit just quickly about our sight and not our physical sight because I know lots of us wear glasses lots of us have trouble seeing I have friends that you know can basically not see at all can see very little and that can be a struggle those physical struggles to see but really what I want to talk about today is the struggle that we have to see as Jesus sees I mentioned it this past Sunday we talked about how Jesus saw a woman in Luke chapter 7 Jesus saw a woman and he saw her one way and saw an opportunity and he saw someone who was in need this is in luke chapter 7 we talked about this on sunday but he saw this woman that he wanted to help and somebody else in the room at dinner saw this woman and looked at her and looked at her only through the lens of her past and what people her reputation and you know some of us have a reputation. Some of us have done things in our past that we're not proud of. And in this particular story that I told on Sunday, there was a, a woman who came into, into uh, around the table to meet Jesus, and he looked at her very differently than the host looked at her. And Jesus saw an opportunity for grace and forgiveness and love to be extended. And so we talked about how Jesus asked this question, and it just, it still is resonating with me. This question that Jesus asked to the Pharisee, to the host of the home, the person that was throwing the dinner, he says, do you see this woman? And he saw her. He had already thought some things that he shouldn't about her. He had judged her. But Jesus says, do you see this woman? And how often do we see people and, and make a quick judgment? And so... I really have been praying and thinking about this idea that we need to see people. We need to see things as Jesus sees things. Those of us who say that we are followers of Jesus, we want to not just follow Jesus, we want to see as Jesus sees. And so we have to work at that because it's not easy. You know, when I first got these glasses and I started to wear them, I found them a little bit, and the person that helped me with them at the store, they actually warned me. You're gonna find these glasses a little bit different if you've never worn progressive lenses before. In fact, at first you might not even like them, and I found that. In fact, I said, oh, they're giving me a headache, and, and so I had to stick with it and understand how to use them properly and how to move my head properly. I know it sounds odd for those of you who don't have glasses, but it was like a thing. The person at the store warned me about it. I'm like, no, it's not a thing. You just put glasses on and you go. But when you have progressive lenses, you use them a bit differently. You know, and when we try to see as Jesus is seeing, it takes some time. It takes some work. It takes some effort. We, oh, this is going to be easy. You know, I've followed Jesus my whole life. I can, I can see people as Jesus sees them, but it's not always that easy. And so we have to work at it. We have to work at seeing things. We have to work at it. 
we need our eyes to be opened sometimes to situations, to people, to what's going on in our life. And so I want to invite you to join me today. I want to invite you to join me. And my prayer is that your desire is to see people, see situations, see your life through the eyes of Jesus. Because I believe it can be a powerful, powerful thing if we follow in the footsteps of Jesus, but not just in his footsteps, but we see things. We see people as Jesus sees. Let me tell you one quick story before I let you go today. And it actually goes into the, back into the Old Testament. There was a prophet, Elisha. And Elisha was a prophet, and uh, he, was, he was helping the people of God. The people of God were under attack. And they were, there was all kinds of things happening, and they were, yeah, they were literally under attack. The people, God's people, Israel, they were under attack. But God provided, as he did, he provided a prophet. And Elisha could, well, he could speak on behalf of God, and God spoke to him, but he could also see things. And he had a sense of what God was doing, and doing for the nation, doing for people. And so Elisha, in second Kings, and you should look this up, 2 Kings chapter 6 in, in the Bible, back in the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter 6, there's this moment where the enemy, the people that, the, the king that was attacking God's people, when he got so fed up with Elisha that Elisha, he, he sent people after him, and he surrounded the city that Elisha was in, and Elisha's assistant, he said, what are we going to do? This is, we, what are we going to do? Like, this is going to go bad. The enemy is at our doorstep. They're going to, Elisha, they're going to take you away. Um, and so the enemy was right there. It seemed, based on the situation, the circumstance, it seemed like there was no hope. There was no hope at all. And But Elisha knew better because he understood what God was up to. He understood that God was working. He understood that God was going to protect them. And so Elisha says in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17, there's this powerful prayer. He's praying it for his assistant, his servant, who's in a panic. He is in a panic because he can't see. He can't see how God's going to get them out of this. He can't see how God is going to bring his people through this or bring Elisha through this. And so Elisha prays this prayer in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. And this is my prayer for us. It goes like this. O Lord, open his eyes and let him see. That's what Elisha, the prophet, prayed for his assistant, for his servant, who was so upset, so worried, the circumstances, and it looked bleak. It looked hopeless. But Elisha prays, O Lord, open his eyes and let him see. O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. And that is my prayer. That's been my prayer all week. And I want to invite you to join me as I've been thinking about seeing people, seeing situations as Jesus saw them, wanting to not just follow in Jesus' footsteps, but see things from his perspective and see people, see opportunities, not obstacles, see not the problem, but the potential. See, that's what Jesus did. And Jesus saw, always saw opportunities to share the God, uh, the love of God, share the grace of God, share the gospel with those who are broken and sinful and hurting and needed help. So that's what I want us to be. That's what I want to be. I pray that's what you want to be, who you want to be. You want to see as Jesus sees. And so let's pray this prayer. It's the prayer of the prophet Elisha. O oh Lord, open our eyes and let us see. Oh, Lord, open our eyes and let us see. Let us see people as you see them. Let us see problems as you see them, not as problems, but the potential that's there. Let us see obstacles, not as obstacles, but as opportunities. Let us see as you see. And as we do, we'll see the Lord working. We'll see the Lord working in people's lives, the Lord working in situations. If we can just pray this prayer together. And so I challenge you this week. I challenge you. It's a simple sentence. Oh, Lord, open my eyes and let me see.